Welcome back to another podcast, Road to Abundance, guys. This week, we have one of my friends, Joey. I know Joey for maybe 15 years. No, maybe maybe like 13 years. I think we met at the gym when I was like 21, 22, starting social media. And we've just been catching up since then. Joey is doing similar work to me. He was a fitness trainer. He's in the health sphere. And uh, he does a lot of biohacking. So welcome to the podcast, bro. Bro, thank you so much for, for having me. And the fact that you just said 13 to 15 years that we've known each other is completely crazy because I've never broke it down like that or even thought of it like that. So you just mentioning it like that uh, blows my mind. It's so crazy. Time flies. Uh, yeah, I did not it, know it's it was crazy. that long. <clears throat> like, yeah. I, think, I think the first time... I heard about you it was around, I was probably 19. It was like at Move My Action, like the gym, like the small one before they, they, they yeah. build a big one. And then uh, we were not talking, but then I, I had a girl I was seeing and she was like, oh, I'm getting coached by Joey. I'm like, Joey who? And then she showed me, I'm like, oh shit, he's, he's at my gym. And then um, I came see you and then we connected and you were, yeah. I think you were competing back then. Like, I think you did competition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's way behind me now, though. <laughs> yeah, man, we we yeah. all we all started like that. So, yeah, man, tell me, like, tell me a little bit for I know your story, but for people, tell them your story, like, from what led you to become a personal trainer at a very young age? Because you're younger than me, on top of it. So when I was 19, you were probably 17 or something like that, or 18, at, and. Um, to the journey that you are now and being successful and why you do all the biohacking. So like, kind of take them through the journey. Okay. Well, uh, how old are you actually now that since I'm you mentioned 31. it, how old are you? 31, you? Uh, getting old, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, to, to take you um, with my journey, obviously, you know, that question to whoever you'll ask, it, it, the answer can always be very uh, elaborate and very large. So I'm going to try to, you know, summarize it for the most part. So I'm not uh, bringing people on 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 crazy different uh, scenarios with me explaining, yeah. you know, the whole journey aspect. But yeah, I'm I'm 28. I'll be 29 this year. Um, so yeah, a few years younger than you. <laughs> I didn't hit my big 30 yet. It's coming. Um, but yeah, like you said, you know, we crossed paths and connected when I was like 17 years old. You were like 20, 22 or, or so. Um, so growing up, um, I've always been into sports, specifically uh, ice hockey uh, in Canada, uh, in Quebec specifically. Uh, I played hockey all my life and up to um 17 18 where i stopped um playing high level um i was on a pretty good path to go play uh, pro hockey but stopped that um i got a slight injury and um i kind of things fell into place by themselves it wasn't a you know a day day to day decision where i was like you know i just woke up one morning i was like you know i'll, I'll... that's right so <laughs> you are saying, um, sorry guys, yeah. there's a little inconvenient with Yoda <laughs> and Joey, yeah, you were talking about, kids. yeah, you were talking about, um, hockey. I think you were at the, the point that you got injured yeah. and yeah. it stopped your career and then you rerouted into personal training. Yeah. Because, um, the reason why was also, um, I started actually working out when I was uh, a month before my 16th birthday. So I was essentially 15 years old. Um, it pretty much started from there that, you know, journey, um, just because my goal was to obviously gain size, increase my performance on the ice. And growing up, I was very, very small and tiny. Um, it created a lot of, I, I wouldn't say negatives, but it would create a lot of disadvantages, specifically speaking, you know, for my hockey career. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why I kind of, uh, got introduced to working out and starting to eat better to improve my, my overall size and my performance on the ice to play the best level of hockey that I could play at that age. And, yeah. um, I realized also, especially starting working out that, um, throughout all of my hockey years and as I was playing different levels and, and with different people, mm -hmm. um, I realized that 
I had something with me that was uh, above average, which was the fitness part. And at every fitness like testing that that we had with um, uh, camps and um, all the just the hockey teams and the tryouts and everything, I would always finish first. Um, which to me, I was like, you know, I'm super small and I had a disadvantage, but I really had that strength in terms of working out to my advantage. And I knew as soon as like my hockey career kind of ended and took, you know, the, the right turn or the, 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 yeah, the right turn. Um, I knew that at that point, what I had at that moment that I could use to my advantage was the whole working out, uh, and, yeah, it was a whole working out and eating better um, uh, aspect that I could just share with people and yeah. um, just share my journey with that at that time, especially when Instagram was like kind of just in the beginning. And, you know, you know, this there wasn't as many people doing that sort of thing. Yeah. And not just with like working out, but with just a lot of like personal brand building, um, you know, there wasn't as much as there is now so um you know it was a good i guess linkage between um ending that hockey career starting with social media sharing that story and journey um and to the start of like more social media too so yeah that was uh, that was kind of just where that kind of took me i did competitions like you were mentioning before in terms of men's mm -hmm. physique and bodybuilding competitions yeah. It uh, that kind of piqued my interest at the beginning, but then after doing a couple of shows, I just discovered that wasn't necessarily for me specifically, and it didn't um, interest me to the level that I want to um, include something uh, as my goal or my thing that I'm driven about. Um, yeah, that's why I kind of didn't do any since uh, it's been like 10 years. And yeah, that's pretty much like my journey. Honestly, nothing really like quote unquote special, but a lot of different things within those years, especially between my 15 and 19 years old, like that last stretch of hockey career, there was a lot of different stories within that story um that really formed my foundation and who I am today and why I do the things I do or everything everything comes from there which like formed everything honestly um yeah so yeah man what you, you you did all that journey that led you like everything happened for a reason so it didn't work in hockey you got injury and then it led you to your personal trainer and like it's more like a health specialist because you don't only do personal trainer you kind of develop skills and you you were kind of a businessman. You were like me, one of the first on Instagram and social presence and all that stuff. And yeah, you didn't go to school, right? You just did the like the training and then you started taking clients and you started having results. And you, then you've been doing this for like 10 years now or something like that. Yes, exactly. Um, I guess I could say that I went to school, but for a couple hours because I dropped out, not even I just did the uh, the the like pre curriculum <laughs> but then decided yeah i'm out i'm not i'm not doing this this is not for me um at that time i was like you know i'd, I'd rather invest my money and time towards just other things and uh that wasn't for me but yeah i guess that counts as not going to school <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i mean you have now like hundreds of transformation like you're doing amazing you, you just release your app and all that stuff was there any like struggle through the journey like I, I remember sometime it was probably hard for money and then you've been successful and stuff. It's like you, you've been living through the ups and downs and the roller coaster of being an entrepreneur. So I want people to understand like the journey and also like nowadays you're way more into biohacking too because you do cold bat, you built your own sauna, you moved in the wood. Like there's a lot of things. So I, I find all that super interesting. I would love to hear more about that. Yep. Um, I love the word too that you're mentioning biohacking because I never really personally even used that word or actually looked into that word. I, I know what it means and kind of what it stands for when you mention biohacking, but I find it super interesting um, that you use that word. Um, it sounds cool. And, um, <laughs> it, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, 
I kind of learn, I kind of, I'm kind of learning that word with you just mentioning biohacking because not a lot of, well, yeah, not a lot of things that I look at or discussions that I have with people actually say the word biohacking, but it's a super intelligent way of, um, I guess, um, labeling all those tools that you're mentioning, mm -hmm. like sauna, ice baths, yeah. um, you know, grounding with the earth, meditation or, or whatever it may be. Uh, but to just go back to what you mentioned about, like, you know, the whole roller coaster ride of being entrepreneur or um, working for yourself or building something for yourself for more freedom. Obviously, you know, up to this point, yes, there have there has been ups and downs and not even specifically just financially either. But, you know, just with a lot of different things, which I think a lot of people could relate to just generally speaking, which is yeah. completely normal. Um, but specifically just like th the whole entrepreneur aspect presently, and you could probably even relate to this um, as with anyone can, who is an entrepreneur or, or who is building their own thing or their own personal brands or businesses, you'll always want kind of more to, you know, you'll always have that other goal you'll always kind of sometimes tell yourself well this is not enough or this isn't good enough but at the same time you might be able to balance that and say like you know i'm happy with with where i'm at yeah. i'm happy with what i created uh, but you know in order to get to all those other goals that you have listed on there or on that um you know dream board or whatever that may be um it's normal to always, well, I find, I think it's always normal to, to be like, you know, you're, you're satisfied, but not satisfied at the same time with yeah. uh, what you built and what you have. So, um, so just with that, um, you know, I have a lot more to go financially with what I want to build with what I want to get, but I've realized that over the years that just with my lifestyle and um, with what I want out of everything or out of life is I've realized that a lot of like my lifestyle is uh, revolved around just staying simple. I've yeah. realized that a lot of things, whether it's materialistic things or friends or um, your entourage, the atmosphere, the environment that you that you're in or that you create for yourself, I think for me, um, having everything simple um, for me is the best way. Um, and it's that I'm, I'm saying that because it's helped me, like, um, have a better budget for myself, not spend on useless and, and stupid things um yeah. you know i, I i'm probably not a, a billionaire or built a billion dollar business or uh you know whatever that may be or what you would think a successful entrepreneur is but i have so much freedom on my end <clears throat> where yeah. like you know yeah it, and, and that's all correlates to my lifestyle it's super simple it's not expensive i invest everything towards myself my my family you know my me and my girlfriend uh how we could just increase our overall performance and biohack ourselves to be better yeah. um so yeah it's it's and i've realized that only over the course of of you know these last 10 years or ever since i began at the beginning <laughs> for me it was like it's you know, I'm thinking like, you know, I need to make more money. And obviously that's something I think a lot of people want, especially like yeah. you're saying entrepreneurs, which is completely makes sense. But for me, I've realized that, you know, that's just one part of the whole formula. That's what just one little part of the whole equation and it'll come, you know, it's, um, what do they call like, uh, that it's a, um, uh, I can't remember the def definition of like, when you don't think of money and you just focus on like the um the, the, craft, the process yeah the process you'll make money like without even solely just focusing on making money yeah. if that makes sense i can't remember the actual wording uh, to describe that but um yeah it, it, when you it, it's, when, it's, when you enjoy the journey it's like if you enjoy working out your shape will be better because you'll push your training more and that's why also I wanted to have you on because you kind of did the same shift as me, the same transformation of like, 
being happy first, being happy now with what you have and being grateful and then the rest will come. And I think that's what I, I like about you. Like um, we've been catching up over the years and you, you have a very similar um, life to me, like in terms of all you do, who you are, the book you read, the meditation, it's like learning to be grateful now. And yes, you have like future goal, but the 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 ultimate result in life is not all the material thing like yes you can have a porch you can have whatever car you want you can have a 10 million dollar house but if you're not happy right now with yourself in that two three hundred thousand dollar house how are you going to be happy later and now you have a beautiful relationship with your girl um she does all the biohacking with you so it's like there's a lot of valuable thing that uh and and when you mention success success is whatever you decide success is for you so when people think about entrepreneur they have the million dollar in their mind but the exactly. real million dollar thing is the feeling that they're seeking and you already have that feeling you have what i call the sacred trinity you have wealth health and relationship and wealth just mean wealthy for me just means freedom and freedom of you you know you're going to pay your bill and you know that yeah. you you have time freedom that's wealth for me then you can have massive wealth and massive success that you built in the future. But we're not in a rush. You're like, you barely 29 years old. If you compound your money for 20 years, you can live like, it's like at one point you'll make a million dollars, like a year of just yeah. compound effects. So the thing is, there's no rush. And that's what I like about you is you realize that that's happiness. And then I'll finish chasing my goal. And that's what I want to share with more men and, and, and women, but especially men, because we're such in a rush to get more, 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 more of everything. And you kind of went like, I have enough of all that shit of society. I'm going to retract to the wood and I'm going to build my own happiness and I don't need much. Exactly. And I couldn't have said it any better. You've said it really well. Um, and it's cool to see also that, um, you have that, um, you know, approach to it all that that mindset of it all too, because it's so important because a lot of people might, you know, whether they're entrepreneurs or not, or people working for other people or whatever, a lot of people end up not even realizing that throughout their whole life, which is crazy to me. Um, yeah. And it doesn't take a lot to be happy. And you don't need much to be happy. And you don't need all those materialistic things that after a week they become normal and just integrated <laughs> into your routine where you're where you wake up and you're like well this is just normal now um, yeah exactly like all those toys and stuff it's cool but if you're not feeling full in in your heart it's 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 gonna be like people are like i'd rather cry in a ferrari than cry in a honda that's true but i'd rather be fucking happy and grateful in the honda than crying in a ferrari and that's where the yep. like you got to compare Apple with Apple. I'd rather happiness and, and you can have both. But the thing is, don't sacrifice one for the other, which a lot of people are doing. And my question to you is, when was the haha moment kind of like that you were like, I know it's a journey. I know it's a process. It didn't happen one, but you started doing meditation, reading more book. You started investing a lot of time. Like it's kind of rewiring your mind. You did all that to rewire your mind and then become the new Joey, like the, the 2.0 of like, Hey, I don't need all that. Like I'm actually yeah. fucking happy right now. Like what was the shift for you? Um, so the shift, I, I honestly, like ever since like I started that whole workout journey and playing at a high level sports and going through like quote unquote shit, uh, and being like really, really down low in the dumps at some point when I was younger, um, I think that was the shift. Um, and you could call it a shift or you could call it just, a, you know, a realization or something that was the catalyst to ignite embarking on these uh, biohacking, you know, tools or mm -hmm. um, spheres of life or whatever, however you want to label it as. Um, but I always, always did have something where I always wanted to like perform, to perform better yeah. or to, um, improve your happiness. Like where yeah. was kind of like, cause at some point you realize that, Hey, I don't need all that shit with the money. I don't need to be rushed. I'm going to get it. I know I'm going to attract it. Let me enjoy the journey. When was that little click for you more like probably like two years ago or something like that, like two, three years ago. It was when I, I wouldn't be able to say the number of years, but obviously, you know, I think the beginning of the whole like 
COVID and lockdown stuff is where I think a lot of things kind of put different aspects into a perspective for a lot of people, including, you know, myself. I wasn't negatively affected by it. I didn't really have like my opinions on all that. But um, I think that was just a shift with just the population because of what was going around, you know, around me. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you're, you're mentioning the word happy and happiness. And yes, I think it, it was a question of, you know, happiness and realizing you could still be happy with less things. But I think the key, like, wording is probably also freedom and realizing how kind of grateful you are with where you live, with what you have versus what other people around the world in different countries may not have and not be able to do. And I'm able to do all this. Um, and especially mm -hmm. now moving out here in the woods at the beginning of like the 2019, yeah, that really put uh, a lot of things into perspective that you don't need much. Uh, and, you know, meeting my girlfriend too, we've always kind of wanted something where we were more secluded, mm -hmm. where we were kind of disconnected from all the quote unquote noise from, you know, yeah. people or things around and a bunch of crap, honestly, this bunch of crap. Um, and just to isolate ourselves and work on ourselves, build what we want on our, you know, property on our compound where we don't even need to leave only for like groceries uh and everything is here for our family our friends and just our close circle of people yeah um because there's a lot of noise out there and there's a lot of things where a lot of people get sucked into different things you know get they get influenced they see things where they need to buy something to feel included they need to go out and drink <laughs> to feel included and feel good yeah. about themselves they need to do this and that to up their self-esteem like it's a so, bunch of noise so let's say um mid I, I i'll ask you a question and then you can answer and i'll ask two questions first are you doing journal journaling including gratitude and and all that stuff and then second part of the question is how does meditation and gratitude and now you do a lot of cold bath, even colder than me, like we were talking about it, bro, it's freezing cold in Montreal, like, bro, you're fucking soldier going at like 36, 35 Fahrenheit, like, I, I'm, I'm at 47, I'm freezing my balls and, and, and oh, yeah. you're doing it in the cold, you're doing, you, have, you built your own sauna, like you did a lot of fucking cool shit, man. And Thanks. like me, I bought it all, you built it all. So it's, it's super cool. And I was like, I respect that I was watching the journey and how did it affect you? And, and same thing with journaling. If you do, like, how do you feel that all those modalities affect your life and made you so much more grateful and so much more connected to the life? It's a game changer. It's a game changer. And you don't realize it until you actually do it on a daily basis. And it's implemented, implemented into your daily routine and, and habits. You do not realize it. I remember having conversations with people and mentors and just reading different things, listening to different podcasts and being like, ah, this is a bunch of wishy washy abracadabra stuff. <laughs> um, like it's true. Like I would see that. And I think for a lot of people that might hear it for the first time or read it or, you know, listen to different things they might be like yeah come on how could this help me you know but honestly it's been a game changer and to answer your question if i do journal or um you know write down gratitudes and three gratitudes or whatever i i kind of used to do it uh, on like a written format but i don't do it on a daily basis because i do it during like my visualization and my meditation in the you know sauna. when i'm sitting yeah, mostly. Or when I'm doing my morning routine alone, my breath work and stuff. Like the amount of times my girlfriend and I are in the sauna and we're we, we don't hear nothing in there. We're completely isolated and we're just having that one to one conversation with one another, shooting ideas or saying like, man, like, you know how like grateful and lucky we are to have this while some people, others like th the amount of uh deep conversations and realizations visually that we have during those conversations and at those times could kind of link to you know that whole journaling or gratitude yeah, you're still grateful every day like you're 100%. still saying and you yeah. list down 
oh yeah and we 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 um recognize it a lot and it it helped me like you know breath work meditation um ice baths sauna sessions all of those modalities or those tools i I call them tools we could call them whatever um but all those tools for me help so much to increase your overall performance as just a human being Mm -hmm. and it it also allows for you to completely disconnect and be present in that moment at that time i've realized that without doing those things or implementing and integrating myself within those tools as part of my routine i've i've never realized like the the i only realize when i'm doing them i only realize that wow if i don't do these things these tools such as breath work meditation yeah. visual visualization when else in the day am I completely not on my phone, not doing anything, not listening to no one? When, there's, it's only at those moments and during those times where I'm not even doing nothing, where I'm just listening to my breath. I'm I'm with myself, my brain. There's nothing going in my ears. There, like no screen, no yeah. uh, words, nothing. And when I came to realize that, I was like, wow, like. There's aside from that, when I wasn't doing those things, those those using those tools, I would never have moments where I'm like completely disconnected and with myself one on one. Nothing, even on the toilet bowl, like you bring your phone, you know, for <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah, of man, it's, it's true, crazy. Though. Like, when are you not like I'm not saying you, but just generally speaking, like when are you not completely disconnected from everything, the yeah. noise, the and it's also um, it's also of how much in tune you are at that moment with just listening to your breathing. You feel your heart rate. Uh, you know you're you're hearing things in your mind that you would never experience without those tools. And man, it's been a it's been a game changer. I I've loved implementing yeah. that. And it's they're non negotiables. I call it they're non-negotiables where they're just like you know there's days sometimes where i don't necessarily feel like doing it or pulling this out to to you know invest my time into this but there's never a day where i miss it they're non-negotiables yeah and they've been a game changer and it's insane like you said that i like that you you being like honest with the fact that it's every day you got to do it every day that's why i started the 55 days of abundance challenge because it's the compound effect it's like when people hear about would you rather receive a million dollar or one cent double for 31 day and the thing people are like oh a million dollar and the other one gives like 5.6 million dollar because at the beginning you see very little effect and then by time it's like increase compoundly so the thing is People are like, oh, why should I do a cold bath? Well, when you're going to do it, you're going to see. And when you meditate every day and when you do your things every day, it's life changing. It's an experience. And quick question out of like curiosity, if you could only pick one from Brett work to Sona to cold bath to whatever, which one would you pick? (laughs) That's such a man. You're putting me on the spot. (laughs) Um. Which one I would pick personally? Um, I I believe that. Oh man, the fact that I built this, that my girlfriend and I built the sauna, it's hard to not say that one. But just with the, I think I think the question you're asking me is just like from the feeling I get of everything. I think the ice bath and the the cold exposure because if I was traveling. I wouldn't necessarily have access to my sauna. So the accessibility of cold exposure is more accessible and I'm able to do it without any excuses. Um, yeah, but there's benefits to, to each one a lot where I feel it. Um, that, that's cool. Cause I said the same thing as you, like when um, I was talking with a friend and he's like, you're doing so many things. If you could only do one thing, I'm like, if I could tell my clients, to do only one thing, I think it would be the cold bath because the cold bath is going to combine your breath, your meditation, your everything. Like you can't think about nothing while you're freezing your ass in that, in that tub. It's like you're going to connect with yourself and then at the level and breath, breath work and all those like breath work changed my life. It's probably my favorite stuff. But if you could do one thing every day, 
that I think would give you the most transformative experience over a hundred day. I think if you take a cold bat every day, this is going to change your life and people underestimate it. And they're like, I don't want to do it. That's why you should do it because breathing is okay. Meditation, it's, it, it doesn't require an extra effort, even training. But even for me, going in the cold plunge every day require effort. Every fucking day, it's a mental, I don't negotiate with myself, but every day I have to be like, Mike, we're doing it now. Oh, yep. fuck. Okay. And then, oh yeah, I could just feel it with you explaining me that situation. Cause I totally get it. Um, ah, yeah, it's, it's, it's rough. <laughs> and that's one thing also from what you just mentioned, that's one thing that's super important too, to take into consideration is, and I was just speaking to my girlfriend about this the other day is, um, that struggle or that battle, however you want to describe it as, but that struggle and that um, negotiation phase with yourself, that that push and that mental talk with, you know, I always describe, you know, you have this little person, this little mic on your shoulder and this little mic on your shoulder. And this one is trying to talk this one out, but then they're battling. That's what it is. But in within those moments of like struggle and and difficult things. That's mm -hmm. where the, the good is. And that goes with anything. I, I, yeah. I, you know, the conversation I was having with my girlfriend the other day was I enjoy deliberately putting myself or going after things that are super difficult or where I struggle or where I need to like completely go into another <clears throat> dimension in my head where I, I, yeah. I, I just enjoy that struggle because I know what's behind it. So I think that's why also the ice baths and cold uh, exposure um, aspect of it all in terms of struggling and being difficult, it holds a lot of value behind it. And yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's amazing. And it's cool that, you know, that's the answer and, and response you're, you know, giving. Yeah, to. man, it's, um, it's, it's insane. And um, yeah, you have like, I had, a, I had a question. I had a question for you actually. Yeah. Um, what 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 have you felt with just you know investing? Because you know you mentioned me building like my sauna and my, and our space here, but I also admire you using you know money or whatever it may be to invest in yourself too with for these tools mm -hmm. or to biohack yourself within yeah. these tools. So what um what do you feel you know that it brought to your lifestyle or how did it um. Bro, it was, you know, it it was insane. Like I always wanted it. And when I moved in a house, obviously, like I wanted it. I was starting it in Los Angeles, but I didn't have the setup and I didn't, I, I had the money, but I was just, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to move. I thought about Miami. I didn't want to move the whole setup. So I waited until I get a nice house here, settle down to invest money. And the question I asked myself at the like when I moved, it was a no brainer that I was going to invest. Like, I mean, the vibration bed is 7,000. I have a meditation pod. That's a thousand. I have the red light sonar therapy. I took the one EMF blocker is 7,000. The cold plunge Excel is 7,000. And then I have a water machine. That's another seven. I have the bed, uh, eight sleep pro pod. It's like 3000 or something like I invested so much money and I even invested in the platinum membership of Tony Robin, which is going to cost me 130,000 for the year. And I don't regret anything. Like that's the best investment. Like you said, in your, in your, in yourself. And the thing is, bro, I could have bought a Porsche 911 cash. I could have bought like a Corvette. I could have, I was going to go buy actually when uh, I was going to change my car and I was going to go buy the new Range Rover. And then I was like, fuck, it's just another car. Like I already have a BMW. And I was just like, why would I spend, what can I, f and then I found a hundred thousand dollar investment on Tony Robin. And then I also paid another $18,000 to uh, do a brain hacking program. And it's the best investment I tell people. And it's funny because the program I have, the road to abundance is like uh 5,500 and people sometimes they're like, Oh, it's a big investment, bro. It's nothing like it's nothing. You probably spend an alcohol this year more than that. And then you just don't realize it or going to the restaurant and you don't even invest it in yourself. And once they start doing it, um, it's life changing. And 
You know, I had, um, I helped a lot of people through my career and, and stuff. And sometimes people also had friends coming here and they realize how fucking beneficial it is. But then they go back to the environment and they don't do those habits and they go back to the routine. They slip and then they, and then every six months you hear those friends and, and your friend, they're like, I'm starting again. I'm starting again. And it's like, you got to keep doing. If you start slipping, it's a very dangerous game. And that's why I like to do it every day. So when you do all those morality, some days, if I'm like, oh, today I'm, I'm going to skip the sauna, but I'm going to do the plunge and I'm going to read and I'm going to do everything. But someday I only do a little bit of red light therapy instead of the whole sauna. And uh, someday I don't do the plunge the morning. Like today I didn't do it in the morning because my girlfriend woke me up. She's like, I need you to take me for my eye surgery stuff. And I was like, okay, cool. So I didn't have time to jump in. And then I came back at work and meeting. So yeah. now it's seven. I'm going to do it before I go to bed. But I make sure I do all the things. And it, it changed my life. And I know how, how valuable it is. So and another thing that I want to I wanna ask you, because now you you are in a beautiful relationship. You're very connected. Your girlfriend, it's, it's very similar to my relationship. It's like you both enjoy the same thing. You both do things together. Um, so how did you manifest this in your life? And, and what is your secret or tips that I know a lot of guys are busy fucking girls, but what they truly want is love and relationship and connection. So now that you have it, how do you nurture it and, and, Obviously, what do you like? Did it improve your life, or you'd rather clap some cheek? Like, tell me from your personal experience, like, how did it bring you a better joy? Um, so yeah, in terms of like manifesting that, um, I, I always believe, and this doesn't go for like relationships, like I was saying, it doesn't go for it, it goes for mm -hmm. you know, family, it goes for friendships also, and just relationships in, in general, whether it's yeah. a partner or whatever it may be. Um, I think it all stems and comes from building you first because I see a lot of, well, I see a lot. I mean, you know, there is a lot of relationships and, you know, a combination of two people uh, that a lot of times, sometimes it's, it's so rocky or doesn't end up working or their individual person is affected negatively. And that's all for to me is all it, it always stems from from you first you as an individual and then together you're you're a team um and i think you know it's it's it has benefited both of us my girlfriend and i because we're good as individuals and uh we both have you know the same type of goals visualizations of things and we're not affected by all the noise from you know the outside things and i think that plays a huge part i i believe that the atmosphere to which you're in the environment to which you're in, involved in and what you're around could affect all, it, you know has a huge role and a huge effect on 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 relationships or individuals it has a huge effect on on people as a whole so i think that plays a huge role um and you know to also say that it wouldn't benefit me to be like it, it's not a benefit to 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 be alone it's more of a benefit to be together as a team and you probably heard of this too the you know they say you know, being at the top is, is boring alone. You know, it's, it's not fun or however that quote is structured. I can't remember off the top of my head, but being at the top of the mountain or doing something alone is, is not as uh, valuable or is not as fun as with, you know, your partner or your teammate. Um, you're, you're, you're together. Everyone achieves more. It's, it's, it's so true. That's what team is as an acronym. It's, it's, a community is always better than one person. Uh, a, a you know a relationship like this is is better. It's it's always more. It holds so much more value. It's more amusing. It's more fun. It's uh, healthier. And you you come to realize that you know again when you're in different scenarios where 
you're around different people or around different types of materials or you know whatever that may be but the the the, the journey the, the journey is much more um valuable together than than just with with yourself but that doesn't go to say that you know you can't love yourself or enjoy being with yourself at times you have to be able to me you know this is just my opinion you have to be able to to be to feel good when you're by yourself as an individual if you have to be able to 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 love yourself to to you know in, enjoy being in your own skin and feeling good by yourself it all start, starts by yourself because if if yourself as an individual is shaky or fragile or there's a bunch of things going on like how do you expect to be with your quote unquote soulmate or your partner or build a healthy relationship when your own individual is not full of a, you know abundance of gratitude of just everything how how the how in the world do you expect to build a, a team chemistry together you know with with being alone or even manifesting it yeah and did you make a list or did you have an image or a clear perspective of who you wanted to attract and then for sure when you share things with people with your girlfriend it's like building together especially the sauna the house and everything it makes everything more enjoyable but you like you said you have to be alone you have to be happy alone and and content and powerful and then you just join forces because sharing is like makes everything more like better and uh, also after you let me know how you manifested and if you had a list of what you wanted what's your like key thing in your relationship like communication sharing the same passion like all that stuff how does it play in in your in your um in your relationship yep that that's a very good uh uh question and look before i even get into anything n you know and again you know this like nothing is perfect which is completely realistic with with everything um and as with everything mm -hmm. there's always th those down moments it's just like cycles it's like seasons winter summer spring fall um you know motivation if you use that word i, I don't use that word too often but it's it's cycles it's cycles with um it, it, you know it, it's it, ups and downs are part of the whole formula and it's part of cycles um mm -hmm. and did i actually sit down and write you know the i guess the attributes or the ca characteristics that i wanted with that other person not necessarily but to say that i didn't kind of manifested in some sh way or, or form that would be false uh, i always had the belief that if everything on my individual side where i'm creating something where i'm able to you know push out my my energy to attract the you know kind of what i want subconsciously or even what i'm actually thinking of then yeah. everything is going to come. It's going to magnetize what I'm kind of seeking. So it's not necessary to say like, you know, I'm going to pull out my my pen and paper and then jot down everything. Sure, that would be a good way of doing certain things, but that's not the way kind of I approach it. I just approach it like, um, you know, you I'm did doing it in this your head. At, like in you, my head. You knew yeah. what you wanted. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And you know, for me, it's. Um, also to kind of because i'm not there like you know i want to find or uh i i need to go out and search it's just for me i was like i need to focus on my craft me you know i need to build my individual to be able to attract and to also support yeah in a way this other person in person in terms of emotions conversations things that we'll deal with so uh that was kind of magnetized we're you know magnetized to one another and um you know you kind of manifest it in a way sure there are some things that i either list on a paper or uh, mentally or visually in terms of like you know does this person you know uh, take care of themselves does this person uh go out and get smashed every weekend uh what what does this person look forward to in the future all those things mm -hmm you know are are important i guess um boxes that kind of needed to be checked yeah um which for me is important and um it's 
you know, were you, you said before, like a force together, you're a force together, which I think up to this point with everything that we've been doing as a team and as a force and as a couple, like just you build that chemistry and that bond that even that that gets even strong stronger and strengthens um so i think just doing all those um projects or doing um you know ice baths together or um yeah. whatever it may be like that that builds a certain bond between uh both of you to you know have an even more solid chemistry and it's also um being in situations where one person may be more vulnerable than the other where you're able to like help this person or communicate with them to help them achieve something and mm -hmm. uh you know it's it's within those lower moments that sometimes um yeah, support each other like oh yeah and, that's important and i think that um the word that you keep saying that is the same word that i use all the time is to attract Like a lot of people are chasing, but whatever you're chasing is chasing you. So if you're yeah. chasing girl, the right one is chasing, but you're running in the opposite direction. If you're chasing money instead of attracting money, if you're chasing opportunity, if you're always chasing, you're telling life that you're, that you want something that you do not have. You're in the lack right now, which when you vibrate, that's what you were saying. When you vibrate from a higher perspective and you're like, I focus on me, Joey, and I'll become the best I can. And whatever is for me. I'll attract and I know what I want because all the the previous experience with girl, I know what I don't want. So now I know what I want because it's just the opposite. I want someone that support me, that love biohacking, that love to do all that stuff. And like you manifested the perfect partner that wanted to live a little further away, do all those amazing things with you and that you support each other, which is amazing. Um, talking a little bit more about like the future, you want kids? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah, That's yeah. Cool. yes That's for, for sure like for for sure that um 100 percent uh i don't know when <laughs> but uh yeah definitely 100 <clears throat> like i come from you a, said you a, want you know, six right That, that was, <laughs> well you're laughing but uh I, my girlfriend can't hear right now but she'd probably say yes <laughs> oh my uh, god my sister has yeah, five bro it's it's like going to disney world <laughs> it's crazy when i go there it's one on my leg one on the other leg grab me there <laughs> uncle mikey pick me up in your arm it's like it, it's like one day i'm like i'm tapped out i'm like okay i need to go back yeah. to my doggy and my girl oh <laughs> uh, uh, yeah but I, i i yeah i you know i come from a big family so like yeah to not be in that same environment you know getting older i guess wouldn't wouldn't make sense uh yeah. and it's something and, that you know is interesting to me and um yeah i, I just don't know when about, <laughs> talking about kids and all that stuff for entrepreneur and people that are a lot of people are busy and they don't prioritize themselves first. So we already know, I won't ask you the question about your routine and all that stuff. We know what you're doing. We know how your routine, you prioritize joy first and then you work. What, mm -hmm. how do you manage your time for the rest of the day? Once you took care of joy, how do you manage work? Like, um, if you feel overwhelmed and all that stuff, like how do you deal with all that? A huge, a, a big, um, tool that I've always used and I still use to this day. And, uh, I kind of sometimes drifted off of it, but then I've realized that it's the simplest thing that works for me. And I have it right here, which keep keeps my mind and time organized and structured is a to-do list. And it's on a piece of paper, uh, cause yeah. I enjoy writing it, grabbing my highlighter or whatever, maybe, and, and getting that check mark on it or yeah. highlighting it out creates I've momentum learned, that's the word that's the word yeah, I use it over the brain it's it's like oh i'm doing good i'm creating i'm doing things it's like that's cool. why you do cold bad that's why you do everything it's like every day you're building momentum that's what it is and a lot of people and you know this like you've heard it too and you probably still hear it to this day people always use the word motivation But again, that's mm. cycle. That that's a cycle that doesn't last. Yeah. It's not sustainable. Mm. For me, the word is all about momentum. Momentum you're able to keep like this throughout the year. Motivation yeah. is is like this. It's like um, habits. 
like I don't I don't believe in motivation. I, I, I don't even think this word should exist because people are like, I'm not motivated. Well, you're not motivated for work. You're not motivated for this, but you can video game for 15 hours or you can Netflix for 10 hours. You're just not driven. And yep. driven doesn't come from motivation. It comes from putting the habit, building momentum, and then momentum and energy, once you move it, it's like a snowball. But the thing is, yep. nobody is motivated. Even me, when I wake up every goddamn morning, I'm not motivated to do shit. It's like, Agreed. I wake up, I feel grateful to be, and blessed to be on this planet. And then, okay, what do I need to do? Let's fucking do it. Let's crush the day. How can I be the most effective? You can prepare your to-do list the day before. You can do it in the morning, whatever works for you. But how can I be the most effective human being and be happy and fulfilled doing it? And whatever yes. it is, you'll find motivation. And yes, you can watch some video there and there to pump you up a little, but it's like pump. You go to the gym, you do a few curl, it looks good, but then it goes away. Like it, it's not awesome. sustainable. It's not sustainable. And and the the way you put it is is very important because I, I say this to a lot of people that I have talks with or or you know, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. The key word, and you've said it a couple times, the key word in all this is habits and routine. Those two things are the most important ways of building a building momentum or just building anything. It always stems from your habits and your routine. Once that is set in stone or solid, everything else will be easy for it to fall into place. Um, all the blocks will fall, you know, one on top of the other easily, easier and better. But for me, it it's always about routine and habits. As soon as that is well implemented into your your structure and your schedule, you're you're on the path to like victory. That's all yeah. about. It's always about routine for me. Yeah, I feel you on that. And you have to. I would just add that before you do the routine, because a lot of people when they have the routine and stuff, yes, you'll build your own routine. You need to stick to it. But why we do routine for a long for like twenty one day and more? It's because it will change your identity. You need to change your subconscious mind and habits on a prolonged period will change your thoughts, will change who you are, you'll change who you become. And the thing is, you just got to stick to it. It's like, do it no matter what and change your identity. Who do you need to become? And that person that you want to become, the life that you want what does that person is doing on a daily? So if that person is doing this, 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 start doing it and change your identity. Yes. So, yeah, man, I, I really love all your vision. I will end the podcast on asking you um, your top three book, your favorite top three book um, that you have read. Um, so I'm going to be honest. I, 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 I have a hard time getting into a consistent um, uh, routine or a consistent habit of, you know, sitting down and, and reading. Uh, there's one here that, I'm still not done and I don't even read it on a daily basis, but it's called uh, Extreme Ownership, How U.S. Navy Seals Lead and Win by Jocko Willing. Um, but I wouldn't say that's my favorite, but one that really stands out. And I think I've read this so many times, especially when I was younger, when I was going through more of down times or uh, anxiety uh, situations yeah. or struggles was The Secret. And... Uh, so that's probably on, on my list because for me, that book, and I, I remember now that I'm thinking of it, that book was always for me, a refresh button. I would go there and just re uh, cl click on that book, read it. And that was my refresh. It would completely, yeah. like you said, refresh the identity or refresh your mindset or uh, approach or just yeah. refresh that electricity inside of you. So I think that would be on the list and one that I would recommend. Uh, number two, one that comes to mind is, I can't remember who the author is, but it's called The One Thing. Okay. Uh, I, I can't remember who, who wrote that. And the third one, um, ah, you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> uh, the third one, um, from what, I still have a lot of books that I still even open and read that we, we've got recently. <laughs> Um, that the one thing is by Gary Keller. It's a big yes. one on the book. Yeah. Yes. One, yeah. 
Yep. Okay. Exactly. It, it, uh, mine was yellow, so I don't know what color that one is. It might be white. Um, yeah. But yeah, that that one was good. And again, that book was just um, it puts things into perspective. Again, leading back to like the whole to do list thing, or having too many thoughts inside your mind to yeah. be able to manage or to properly structure and organize your um, all the things it's that like are rebounding focusing on one thing. Exactly. So that was very good for me because, you know, I'll admit in the past, you know, we're high performing people, so to speak. So to have all these thoughts or things to do or all these, you know, the yeah. to do's all I'm inside your like brain. That. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're you, sure. man. It's like, if, yeah. and that's why I do the routine in the morning because it helps me to ground myself and remember that, hey, like, we got to we got to focus we got to do what we have to do but yeah like growing up gaming and growing up on social media my phone was always there i'm i'm like i'm i'm working and then i'm texting and then you're texting girl and then you're gaming and then watching a movie on one screen and then and then your work doesn't really move and and i would still catch myself like now people are like hey you're not answering your phone yeah i'm like yeah bro i'm working <laughs> like yeah. so when i work now i don't have my phone with me it's like Cause I know my weakness. I get distracted. I'll see a notification pop on my phone and then I'll be like, Oh fuck, I have to answer now. So if you turn your phone or if you know your habit and you turn it and you do things, um, I also always have almost always have my phone on vibration just because I don't want to feed my brain with all those notification. And it's been years. I don't have notification for any social media and all that stuff. And, um, yeah, I like what you say. Focus on one thing. That's amazing. And the the third book from what's coming to my mind, and it's probably not the best example, but I've read it in the past when I was younger. I think, yeah, it would would be um, it's called Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. Yeah, it's uh, amazing, bro. It's probably the the most sold book, but. Yeah. You would have to read it again, I swear, because you didn't understand it the first time. When I read it at 19 heard, and what I understood now, bro, yeah, it's day and that. night. If you're going to read it, you'll be like, did he change the book? Like he's dead yeah, and he came uh, back and he re-read it again. He's fucking with my mind. But that's when you know it's when good. When I read it for money, yeah, it's bro, it's so good. Like you can even um, – I do a lot of Audible too. Like while I run or while I do things, Audible is really good. Uh, if you can't pick up the habit of reading, um, like I like to read in the morning or at night before bed, but if audible helps me, if I go for a run, some, a lot of people run with music, I run with books. That's so, good. um, so, what, what, so I do. So what are you currently, uh, like listening to, or if I, if I shoot back the question to you if you could remember or like what, what example yeah. have you read recently or what are you on right now in terms so, of the audio or physical recently i'm reading right now i'm reading this it's uh the the magic of thinking big um and at the same time i like to combine books so at the same time on my phone i'm i'm listening to psycho cybernetic uh it's um it's like a doctor, um, not a doctor, it's a plastic surgeon that realized that changing people's face, sometimes 50% of the time was changing their identity and the other 50% of the time people didn't even realize that they had surgery because their identity was so programmed. So he, he's, he was like, in order to help my client, because I'm not in the business of taking money just to change their face, which a lot of people are, this guy was actually a genuine guy. He's like, I could avoid 50% of the surgery and the transformation of the face just from reprogramming their mind and their identity because most of people don't need the surgery and they think that they do so it's a really good book um on reprogramming the mind and all that stuff and i have a whole collection of book there i would say the last one that i read recently um Which one did I read recently? Oh, or which one? Which one? Which one comes to mind where you're like, you know, that that one's a good book. Um, well, Psycho Cybernetic is for sure a read. Uh, Think and Grow Rich for sure a read. And I would say I have a top three in my top three. Uh, I have more than that book, but I would say Four Agreements by Miguel Ruiz. You have to yeah. read that book. It's a fucking 
life changing <laughs> book. Um, I still this this, this would be your number one book, and then I would say because it changed my life when I needed it, and then I would yeah. say um, now by uh, Edgar Tolle, it's uh, the Power of Now by Edgar Tolle. Yeah. Um, and you have two books that would be similar equally. It's uh, Becoming Supernatural by Joe Dispenza and uh, The Unfettered Soul by uh, Michael Singer, something like that. Michael, I think it's Michael Singer. But the thing, there's so many other books, but those ones, it's like what I do is I always ask people, what are you seeking for right now? Like what what is actually right now that you need most in your life? And then I'll recommend a book but those four books are general book that will change your whole mind. And then, oh, the last book I read, actually, it was uh, Ask and It Is Given by Abraham Hick. I just finished it. That's the book that I just finished. Um, ask and life will give you. And in between, you're there and you're blocking the frequency. Like, you, mm-hmm. like we were saying, you're chasing, you're doing things. Yeah. But as soon as you ask life, life will give you. But the problem with human being is we we interfere in the process and, and we think that it's not that easy, but it is. And once you remove yourself from the equation and you just also we try to control all we receive. So let's say you're like, give me a million dollars. First, you have to believe and feel like a million dollar before you can have it. But once you align with that, maybe you lose your job and then you're like, what the fuck? I wanted money and now I'm broke and I'm losing my job. And then you create a company and that company goes to 10 million. And then you're like, you know, that's what happened. It's people try to control what's happening. And then it doesn't happen how they thought it would happen. And then they think that life is not giving. And let's say when they lose their job, they start on that spiral of like all the negative, all the shit. And then everything is bad instead of having that mindset of like, everything is happening for a reason. Why is it happening to me? And now yeah. that's the the most important question I ask myself is like, when something is happening to me, I'm like, what is the good? What is the, the, the gift that I can see? So giving you a quick example, when I moved to Miami, I got my money stolen on the house that I was putting money on. And it was a, a whole deal. They tried to steal like $24,000. Fortunately enough, I recouped 16 and I, le- I lost 8,000 on the deal. And then I had to settle down with my girlfriend and then we found this house that I live now that is the perfect fucking house that I'm going to stay two or three years at. And it was eight months down the line that we found it. And if I had signed a lease in that house for a year, I could not have found this house. So the thing is the other house was very average and it was like, there was no choice. The market was insane and I just needed something now. So the thing is, Life as a way of showing you what you're missing. And actually, I went back to Canada for three months this summer, which if I had the house at $8,000 a month, that would have been, I couldn't have done that because I don't want to pay $8,000 and not be there. So I actually went back, see my friend and family, and I came back. So life always have a way to do things and presenting to you in a way. And then you're like, fuck, it's not how I wanted it. That's why you react. You're trying to control, but you'll always be given. Just let life surprise you. So that book is a perfect example of that. Wow. And um, And so I I had a question for you. And I know you said like uh, the end of the podcast and stuff, but uh, it's just, (laughs) it's, it's good what you're speaking about. And yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 we, we've known each other for, for a long time. We've, Mm -hmm. you know, linked up, when we were younger, you actually sent me a picture not long ago of when we were uh, a lot younger at the gym and stuff. Yeah. So I found that funny. Um, but I, yeah, I, I wanted to ask you like, what, um, what kind of, I guess, got you into, you know, all of this for yourself, sharing it with other people. If yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you have like, you know, a sports background necessarily. I know uh, that when you were younger, you had like an accident with your motorcycle, if I'm not mistaken, at one point in time. Yeah. But like what what kind of um because it's not everyone that's like that, you know? It's not mm-hmm. everyone where we're able to where I guess I'm able to have a conversation in this genre 
with everyone, you know, not everyone will be on the same frequency or understand, or you'll be able to say certain words where they'll be like, yeah, okay, this guy's cuckoo or something. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, there's so, a lot, but like what kind of was, I guess the, the root catalyst or uh, what, or maybe someone you met or something that yeah, you Yeah, it, it's a little bit of, a, it's a little bit of both. So I played sport when I was young, but it had nothing really to do with it. I always had this thing in my inside of me since I'm a young kid. I was interested in Egyptian and all that stuff. And I I was interested in magic and all the, the, the cool stuff. Really? And I was like, there must be more to life than what we, than, than, than the system. I didn't, I didn't like school. I was the, a top at school. I had like, I, I found my grade. I was always top of at school of everything. It was easy for me, but I was like, this system is not working. It's not for me. And I, I was always trying to find a way. And that led me at 19 years old. I was not really happy. I had like, things were not really good. I had the motorcycle accident. Um, and I was in the bad path and I found Tony Robin and I was like, fuck, I like what this guy is doing. And this guy is helping people change their life. And that was the click for me. I was like, I want to be that guy. I want to be, I want to be connecting with human being and changing their life. And then, um, I dedicated my life and becoming the person that I could be now that will change people's life. So it was a journey of like 12 years before I really was like, I'm the, I'm, I'm ready. I'm my higher self. I feel good about that. I'm where I'm right now, I can really make a, a huge impact. So in the meantime, I did fitness. I did a lot of thing like coaching yeah. people. And then I was like, no, it has to be more for me. And that was the shift. And I was depressed in the meantime, I, I went through depression and consuming addiction, sex, girls and all that stuff. And, and I was not addicted to, to drug or alcohol, but I was ad addicted to validation from girls and all that stuff. And I know a lot of guys are like me and I know a lot of guys have a rough path and a lot of guys are depressed because we're chasing all the cars, the Lamborghini and all that stuff. So at one point I was like, you know what? I need to make them realize that this means nothing. Like it's cool to have it. And, and that's exactly what you did in your own journey of like realizing that life is so much more than just fucking chasing those things. And if you do chase those things, you'll end up miserable, even with millions of dollars. And one of my good friend, uh, Tanner Chidister actually made $50 million in sell, like multi-millionaire. And I wouldn't talk about it if he didn't, but he, he posted it online two years ago or a year and a half. He, all, he, he, had a, he bought a gun and he wanted to shoot himself because he was like, I have all that money, but I'm miserable. And that's the problem. It's like, you think that money and all that, those things will get you rich. And that also Jim Carrey says it in his speech, I wish everybody was rich and famous because they would realize that it's... Realize. Yeah. It's, 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 it means nothing if you're alone and if you do everything. So all that affected me a lot because I lived through it and I was good looking, I had money. I was an influencer. I had the dream life and I was miserable. So I was like, there must be another way. There has so to when, be another way. So when, when you're saying like, you know, I was uh, miserable or, you know, all those realizations that were coming into your mind or that you were looking yourself in the mirror, mm -hmm. so to speak, and you were like, telling yourself all these things was there a certain moment that you could think of right now where you're like like you know it was at that moment was there anything was there a conversation yeah, the, with someone was it someone that you crossed paths with a podcast that you listened to was it a post that you put out on social media yeah. where people commented on it I like what the, was that thing if if there is something that you could think of yeah i remember vividly one moment that it, it was like accumulation of things but i remember one moment that i was very unhappy like very i, I was 27 years old and i tell the story that i left for i was traveling the world because i, I needed um momentum Escape. like short pleasure and yeah. i was traveling the world and and I'm a hot guy. I can get whoever I want. I, I had the dream life and I was in the Maldives and I had a $50,000 trip all paid for everything, bro. The dream dream. And I, everybody dream about going to Fiji and the Maldives. It's like the bucket list of everyone. And I had the villa on the water for 7,000 a night and all that, everything, bro. And I manifested all that for free food included food. I was supposed to pay. They gave me everything. It was a blast, bro. But the thing is, I was unhappy, bro. I was depressed on that island and everybody in my DM and everybody that I was posting my life on social media, like everything is fucking amazing. I'm in that water. Sick, yeah. Like, 
everybody's like, oh, I, I dream about your life. I wish I had your life. And me, I'm just like, fuck, I feel miserable. Like, I feel like I could, I could die right now. And I, I don't even want to live. And, and that was like, for a while, it was like that for me. And that was a moment of like, that's when not too, so much later, I found the book, The Four Agreements. And I started living my life on those agreements. And the thing is, at that moment, I realized that, bro, life, I didn't want to live anymore. And I just couldn't suicide because I was like, I have everything. And yeah, I'm meant for so much more. But it's like, I didn't want to enjoy it. Like, I had nothing to live for, kind of. Like, I just, and then... I was like, I need to change my way of thinking, my way of being, what I chase, what I seek, who I surround myself with. So that's when I was like, I made a shift in my life. And then I was like, I have to stop living for other people and start living for myself. And I have to stop having expectation and chasing all that money. Yeah. And then life completely changed for me since then. Do you, do you find it's also, um, do you find it's also like, a question of you know doing all these fun and dreamy things and then realizing like bah, after two days it's just normal yeah like, so you, is, it, is it realizing like you know because you're like you're saying you were getting all these comments and, and dms from people saying oh my god shit like it's so sick where you're at i would love to be there i would quit my job to do something like that i wish I wish I was this. I wish I was there with you or whatever yeah. it may be. Do you, do you, do you think it's a question of also like you realizing or you going through, th you know, those cool dreamy things and being like, bro, it's like, it just that's exactly normal. that. It's like when I got the brand new Mercedes, I got the luxury apartment. I was eating at the restaurant five times a week. I was having any girl I wanted. I could travel the world. I was going to the best destination and I had time freedom and money freedom and I was still empty. I was like, okay, this is not it. What, what the American dream, what they tell you it is, it's not that. And a lot of people will think that this will bring it something. So that, that's the problem. It's because they'll never have it or they're not aligned with it. So they won't attract it. So because they justify that they're not happy because if they get here, they'll be happy. But once you're here, and you told yourself once you're here and then you're like, fuck, I'm still miserable. You think when I'll be here and then no, yes, it's cool to fly private. Yes, it's cool to fly first class. Yes, it's cool, all that. But the thing is, if you don't enjoy your simple life and if you're not happy just with yourself alone, you're never going to be happy anywhere. And once you realize this, this is a game changer. And often you need to hit rock bottom to feel like that. And once you feel like that and you're like, I can only go up from that, from that low bottom and, and, there, like there's always two things like it, people can change but drastic change come from massive pain and you're like I don't want this ever again in my life and once this happened then life start changing and people that's when they take action and I know a lot of guys are suffering I know a lot of people are suffering and just for guys like the suicide rate is probably bro enormous higher than ever before because we don't talk we don't talk about our feeling and we have all those society pushing us to to accomplish things and to be someone and and to have all that material and it doesn't make us happy so that's yeah. why i was like i need to be the guy and and one other thing that i told myself is everybody that's doing those job they don't have my look i'm fully tied up i'm muscle i'm like i'm a, i'm the young guy so i was like if i can be the cool kid on the block doing all that fucking shit and show people that meditation and breath work and all that thing is cool and if i can go to school and teach people like kids that being kind and being positive and being a fucking man is cool and is that's the way to do things that was my dream like to because everybody that was coming to speak, it's like Ed Cartole is an amazing person and Miguel Ruiz too, but they're like 60, 50, whatever, 70, like Tony Robbins is 63. And it's like, I couldn't really relate to all those people. So Tony, it was a little younger when I, when I first encountered him, he was probably 50 something, but it's like, I wanted to be the young one to empower people. So yeah, yeah. man. And, and <laughs> just to connect yeah. to what you're saying, because it's, it's so important um, you know, you were saying the th the example of like the Maldives and then uh, mm -hmm. not long after when you were like, I think you said 27, 28, not long after mm -hmm. you discovered that book, The Four Agreements. Yeah. So to, to link 
you know, with what I'm about to ask you to that example and scenario that you just gave, when uh, did the whole biohacking thing get introduced in, into your life? Was it um, something that you saw online where you like, you know, I'll just try um, it out and see how it benefits me and then share, you know, the advantages? Yeah. Uh, what, was for, it anything that, that, um, that sparked that on, on your end? For me, um, I think it was a little bit like you. It's like, since you're in fitness and you're in health and you're, 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 always trying to improve yourself. So I tried every fucking diet possible. I went vegan. I tried like any fucking thing you can imagine. I tried on myself. And that was always for me to find the perfect for me because everybody's a little different. So there's going to be tweak. And that led me to how can I be the most upgraded human being? And then I was like, I heard that Oh, uh, if you do red light, it heals the scar, the tattoo. It also heals your mitochondria. It does this. It, it, it removed the adenosine from your body. And I was like, I'm, I'm sometimes I'm groggy in the morning. And then should yeah. I take coffee? Should I not? I was always trying to be the perfect machine. Like in terms of, I had a lot of gut issue. Like, you know, from back in the day, I was bleeding like crazy. Yeah. I almost died three times. So for me, I had, um, because I was bleeding all day, all the time. I had a, I was always tired because it, it empty your, your blood and it empty your iron and, and all that stuff. And it empty a lot of other stuff because you're losing blood. So oh, yeah. I was always trying to find way to, um, improve my health, improve my, my, um, my mind to stay focused and sharp and all that stuff. So all that led me to all the bioacting because I was like, I need to heal myself. I need to find out to be. Nice. more focused, better, more driven, more motivated and whatever, like it was back then. Yeah. So it led me into biohacking. And then I found like so many books on it and I read so many things. And then I went to conference and events and I met, I attracted all those people in my life when I started That's going there. That's so good. That's, yeah, man. It's, it's cool to hear. <laughs> I'm, I'm always curious. And I know you were asking me questions, you know, for over an hour, but you know, I, I'm also curious Dude, since we're speaking to one another and um, it's always good to get yeah. insight from, from, you know, people like you for myself. It's, it's always mm. good to get different insights and reasonings as to why people like you do this or um, why we do it yeah. or, you know, what you prefer over something else. So I, I like it. It's just, it's <laughs> more data that I could use too, maybe to try out on, on my end or to yeah. do more of. I still have to, I, I was looking recently at like all the red light therapy stuff. I didn't invest into anything yet, but it interests me a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's probably the next like purchase that I would love to yeah. get in combination with like right prior to the sauna or waking up. There's also the, uh, yeah, the, I'll like, have, um, EMF mats. at the end of the month, I'm going to get the, the guy that I bought is Sona on the podcast, uh, the Sona red light therapy. Cause I, I combined both. So, um, I'm going to get him because his, his red light are very special red light. So I'll send you the podcast when I'm, when I'm done oh, editing yeah, it right. and you will hear because this guy know everything about red light. It's his, he's passionate about it. And that's what I really like. Cause I did so many research on all that. There's so many different stuff, but Emmy yeah. explained really why he designed those one and why they're working better than other. And since you already have like some red light, um, you can buy just the lights. Like I have one light here next to my computer that, um, I, I use, uh, the the red light help also next to the computer to block any, uh, you don't need to wear the glasses anymore. You just yeah. open the light and then it's going to block the blue light coming from wow. the screen because there's a red light in your, in your vision. So all those cool thing. And, and then also one, one thing you're going to like in Canada is those lights are producing some heat. So you put that next to your computer and then you're just in t-shirt and then it's warming you up. So awesome. it's like, it's, it's like a little firework, you know what I mean? So it's, it's amazing, but yeah, man, it's just investing and keep investing and whatever it's like, the goal is just to invest slowly. Like I know now you, you used a lot of your money for the house and all that stuff. So then it's to slowly getting the red light and finding the the right one. But for sure, man. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. I, I love it. And like you said, it's, uh, it's a good, it's good investments to upgrade, you know, who you are and what you want to achieve and, you know, make sure that your self individual machine is performing at, you know, a high frequency and, 
yeah you know how, how you're rolling is also what you're gonna attract and manifest too so um, yeah exactly it's, it's great um i love that <laughs> and, you're doing that I, it's cool that you you and yeah yeah it's cool that you're able to switch your whole approach with with everything and your mindset and i i mm. find it refreshing and i find that it's also good information and and good uh thoughtful shares uh from what you're experiencing and what you know and what you're doing you know to put out there for a lot of people because there's a lot of people just like man there's a lot of people struggling uh and there's a lot of people that, <laughs> that are not operating at a high frequency and it's funny because yeah. i I uh, I follow um, and I recently got more into listening to um, his name is Gary Brecka from 10x Health. Okay, yeah, he's good. That guy's yeah. good. He he said something that really stuck with my mind is uh, a lot of people right now, the average person, so to speak, is operating at only fifty to sixty percent of their true normal. You know, they're yeah. operating at fifty to sixty percent of like their full capacity of their own machine yeah and they don't even know what they're missing out on uh yeah. with that extra 40 percent. i would say even less bro i would oh, say maybe oh, yeah. 20 30 percent because 100 percent just yeah. sugar alone is killing your clarity your focus your your happiness everything and then people could function but they don't realize because if you're functioning at 20 25 percent all the time you don't realize that you could be better and once you're, when you, you do better for a few days, that's when you're like, fuck, I've been like weak. And I really respect you for putting all that work and, and, and putting all the knowledge and investment in yourself. And that's, that's what I like to see. I like to see human beings that are like aiming to be a better person and investing in themselves. And if there's, I always tell my client or people, if there's one thing that nobody can take away from you is who you become and the investment you make in yourself, because we're, let's say we're going in recession and depression and you would lose everything. You would still be the man that you became. And when things going to shift, you'll still make the shift way faster than anybody else because of who you are and who you became and what you know. So a lot of people are wasting time, but when you invest in yourself, money, time, and all that stuff, it's a massive change. And Oh yeah. That's the one thing about building wealth and the million dollar. It's not the million dollar that matter. It's who you become doing a million During because process, doing a million yeah. dollar require a whole shift in identity. Yeah. So yeah, man, totally tell true, people yeah. where, where they can find you if they want to be coached by you. Like um, you, you offer training, nutrition and all that stuff. So tell them where they, they can find you, your app, your social media. And yeah. So um personally for me it's just uh joey horniak or j underscore horniak h-o-r-n-y-a-k or jh fitness and performance.com and uh aside from that uh my girlfriend and i because since we were speaking a lot about her and i and the projects and stuff that we're doing uh we're very active on tiktok and on instagram and sharing all of our projects our diys yeah. what we do together it's called the horniak home and uh yeah. she obviously takes care of more of those pages and the videos but we share a lot and raw authentic uh things from from everything that we're doing and yeah. we started with literally no knowledge into nothing and we're slowly building our you know quote unquote <laughs> resort and compound yeah. so um yeah that's where I people it, but it's cool it's beautiful <laughs> to see like <laughs> it's so fun it's so fun and we always tell each other like um no one could ever take that experience away from us and yeah we're building it together we're building our relationship together um it's things that'll always stay with us forever and it's so mm -hmm. satisfying too um the yeah. things we learn through those uh, pro processes those projects is yeah it's just incredible it's, it's beautiful bro yeah, that's awesome thanks. i'll put all your link um below and um yeah man thanks a lot for your time i'm happy i'm always ex like that's why I, I leave the podcast open because conversation lead to knowledge and i just oh, yeah. i never put a time limit and i just like to share with you and and you're amazing bro keep keep growing keep being the man that you are and keep leading by example um i know you have a lot of amazing fitness content that people can go watch too so yeah guys if you want to follow Joey, uh, go give him a like, share, follow. He's an amazing coach. You can reach out to him if you want to get trained. 
Uh, obviously, I don't train no more. So I would recommend Joey. He's amazing at what he does. And it's going to keep you on the loop. And he's also going to get you upgraded on all the other stuff. So I'll see you in another podcast, guys. Amazing. Leave a subscribe. It was nice.